All right, once again, congratulations to Mrs. Ross on her retirement and to all of those with 15 and 20 years of service. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Kobuko to introduce our middle school staff. Okay. At this point, I will have Mr. Penrod lead his middle school staff in their presentation. Good evening, my name is Matt Penrod. Uh, I'm the principal of Building Principal here at Central Square Middle School, and I'd like to introduce Mr. King and Mrs. Smolik, who are also part of the administrative team here. I'd like to recognize all the staff members that came out tonight to support uh, the technology department. Over the years, you have heard from uh, reading initiatives and character ed initiatives and all kinds of initiatives here at the middle school, and I thought it'd be an important thing to share uh, what we're doing in technology, uh, especially because of how it applies to uh, our career and uh, college ready standards and our 21st century skills we've been talking about and the attributes of a central square learner that we've been talking about. Um, most of you have had students that uh, have gone through the program here at Central Square Middle School and you probably recall the toolbox or something like the toolbox. Um, you may still have one sitting at home on your shelf. I know in my mother's basement is the lamp I made in seventh grade technology class but it was industrial arts back then. Things have changed a little bit since it was just a toolbox and since it was industrial arts. So I'm going to introduce uh, Katrina Vant, who is the department coordinator. Uh, so what you're looking at up here is uh, what tech used to be in the last couple of years ago. Um, these guys are great. They have always, always, always made things a little bit better, a little more creative, and always at the end of the year looked back and said, how can I make this more fun for the kids? Um, and this is kind of a stem off of this. So even our old pro program, honestly, was awesome. I think uh, the kids always loved it. Uh, but at one point or another, we got into robotics, and thanks to a lot of uh, generosity from you guys, from administration, uh, we got the robotics program going. And from there, uh, I think all three of our middle school tech teachers have really just kind of grabbed onto a passion and run with it and found kids that have the same passion and inspired them too. So this is what it was and it's still some of the same things, uh, but before it was just simple. All kids went in one direction. They went from seventh grade tech to eighth grade tech and they didn't get any variation until they made it to the high school. Uh, and when I was looking at tracks and how to actually get these kids in the right direction for their interests, uh, it just didn't work starting them at ninth grade. So we looked at the seventh grade system and tried to start moving them right at the beginning. <laughs> and there were all kinds of outside influences. The tech teachers uh, have been big proponents of attending the technology conference at SUNY Oswego. There's definitely been that move towards college and career readiness. Definitely a movement towards STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, and throw some other initials in there at other times for other things. Uh, there's the natural curiosity. Somebody once told me that you are what you teach and they are middle school boys who like technology. And they have an inquisitiveness and a desire to make things fun and interesting and get people really engaged in what they love to be engaged in. They all have an interest in learning and they've had a certainly supportive and handsome administration to back them up um, before I was here. But, um, and they really experimented with you know, they had their original projects, material skills, and then they looked at how can we do some other things that we haven't been doing when we were building toolboxes and rocket cars and air gliders and catapults. How do we work in, in the inventor software? How do we work in vacuum forming and CNC machining and robotics and 3D printing and injection molds and all kinds of other things like that? And all those things influenced it. And then, and then came Mr. Hickey. Yeah, so uh, Tech Seven had a lot of Tech 7 had a lot of uh, shorter projects, so what we gave kids now is an option. When you're in seventh grade, some kids say, geez, I like the computer lab, I really like that. They can now take one of four classes. So that after you take tech and seventh, you can differentiate whether you want to do robotics or material processing, which is more of the, the machinery and that sort of stuff. So as kids get to figure what they like in seventh, then make a choice in eighth grade. So we're giving them more choices than just A to B. Uh, we'll start out with our robotics program, Mr. Dieberdorf. Tom, real quick before you move on, all seventh graders are taking a consistent curriculum now and yeah. making the decision for eighth grade, correct? Yeah, all seventh graders take the same. Yep. And they can still take eighth grade tech as an option or perfect. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, another another question, Tom. 
does, does the seventh grade give them a sampling of the four options in eighth grade so they, they have a good head on the shoulders to make the choice? Not only that, we go through each option before they pick their courses with eighth grade guidance counselors. So Katrina has an excellent PowerPoint for eighth graders going to ninth grade, what your options are. We're putting one together for this year's eighth, seventh graders what you can take in eighth. And they'll have pictures and everything. So and we discuss it all year. So more important, we do it right before they choose their classes, so it's fresh in their mind. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Why say with that now? Um, <laughs> thanks for being here. It's, it's great that uh, when Mr. Penrod came to us and said, hey, would you like to present what you're doing? And I said, absolutely. I said, do you realize that they have programming for drones, too? And I said, they're really cheap. We can buy a few of those and add that to our curriculum. So I'm kind of doing a little pitch for that also. Um, and, and then your question, uh, he said, can you write down some things you're doing in robotics? And so I wrote down a few things, and then he came over again and he said, uh, don't share all that because they won't like you. So I'm going to wipe out the seventh grade one and just briefly talk about the seventh grade. Uh, when you ask, do we share the curriculum or each area in seventh grade? Uh, yes. Uh, for seventh grade robotics, they have two weeks, and in the two weeks, we actually give them a pre-made robot, and it's mainly programming. So we hand them the robot, we give them various challenges. So they work with a partner, and we'll say, solve this maze. And it's usually a figure eight. Uh, so they'll go to the computer, they'll write the program, download the program, which are a lot of skills in itself, uh, and then they solve the challenge. And the best part is when you see a student say to their partner, no, I think the wheel has to go one more rotation. They say, no, 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 three rotations. And they have a little bit of arguing, and we call it collaboration as teachers, but it's kind of a controlled argument. So they go through it, and they go, and they argue, they figure out who wants to choose it, they rewrite the program through trial and error, go back, run the program, works, doesn't work, they find out right away. Then they come back and they say, the next day, what are we doing next day? And we give them sensors. So they'll write a challenge, uh, that means a touch sensor, a color sensor, ultrasonic sensor. So they go through the same maze um, and all the time they're learning programming. But to watch the students write it down, get really close to solving the challenge, and then actually run back to the computer, rewrite the program, pick it up, and they'll run it and say, hey, these robots cost 400 bucks, stop running with them. Okay? But it's real tough to control middle school students. Uh, so now let's move on to the eighth grade. Uh, with our eighth grade, the kits there, you see there's a lot of pieces. It's about 1,500 pieces. Um, so in the beginning, when we first started robotics, um, I would say, design a robot through this. And the students are like, how do the parts go together? So what's nice with this curriculum, we have on the computer step-by-step -step instructions to build various projects. We can click through this. Uh, one of the activities, they'll build a windmill. Uh, and it's kind of neat, it's more like science. Because they'll build a windmill, and they'll build an energy transfer station, and then they'll gather jewels or electricity from it. And so we set in front of a fan, it runs for a certain amount of time, and the box right there says 100 joules. And so it's kind of neat. They do a lot of experimenting with it. They actually record the data, uh, organize the data, hand it in, we grade it. Uh, but the cool thing is, once we've done this, I say, now you're on your own. Design a better window. Gather as many jewels or electricity as you can, so you and your partner design as many, or design the best windmill. So anyways, they design the best windmill, and then after they design the windmill, they take the electricity they gain in an energy meter, and they give it to the next group. And the next group has to design a gear car with the electricity given to them. So it may be 20 joules, 18 joules, depending on the group ahead of them, how many joules they gain from their windmill. So then they put into a gear car and see how far it goes down the hall. First year we did this, they ran about 8, 10 tile, I thought that was cool. And then the second year we did this, we had students put them in the hall out here, going all the way past the office, down to the gym. And it was just amazing how they've increased in the ability. And I think what happens is older brothers and sisters tell younger brothers and sisters and neighbors how to do it, and they cheat a little bit, which is okay. So it's kind of neat. Uh, what you see here is they had to build a solar collector. Oh, too fast. So they had to design a solar collector to gather as much electricity also. Am I too loud? Too long? All right. Um, so the students came up with and they said, listen, this isn't real. We have a light bulb hanging just in one spot. So we designed a little robot here that would drive at a slow speed. And so now they had designed their solar collector that would angle and kind of follow the light bulb. Students got even sharper than that and they started building little cars underneath it that would follow along and extend up the light bulb to get as many jewels. Move on to the next one. Okay. All right, and then after all this, the students have a pretty good idea on how the parts go together, how to build things, and then we do the fun stuff. 
And now I say, all right, we're playing, we pick teams, and we play soccer. So they have to build a robot to play soccer three on three. So I put the whole floor in the room, put some goals in there, and so the students actually will program a robot to play soccer. And it's kind of neat. Some of the robots have grippers that grab the ball, some will throw the ball, some don't work at all. Uh, and that's part of the fun. All right, sorry, I passed too long. <laughs> Uh, material processing is it a little a bit of an advancement from the woodworking classes in seventh grade. It's a lot industry-based. So uh, one thing we brought down from the high school a few years ago was the plastics unit and the hardwood, softwood, and metals. Uh, so you see right here some plastic crystals. We have an injection molder we just got two this year. Uh, thanks to our administration, we really appreciate it. We needed them. Uh, so we do three or four projects. One is this injection molder. You can see the heat up plastic. They learned about plastics. Bet, bet, advantages, disadvantages, why, this class has a lot to do with why would I use a certain material over another, what are the advantages and disadvantages. So you can see here is a mold of a top, and the kids bring all these home, so they do, they do an injection mold, uh, there's three of the projects, we have molds for the, a top, the corn cob, and the screwdrivers, and I get more parents coming up to me outside of school saying, I'm so glad my kid made a screwdriver, it's in my drawer and I use it every day, these little screwdrivers, so. Another project we have is, um, well, we skipped, we have the um, vacuum forming, and a lot of kids, they say, oh, I've seen that before. When my dad bought a whole package of screwdrivers, they had the plastic formed over each screwdriver. Oh, I, that's how we do it. So they see firsthand how things work in industry, and it gives them a good jump start in only middle school. Uh, we also, besides just dealing with pine, we talk about hardwoods, softwoods, forestry, conservation, um, that sort of thing. Some science was brought into it, Ms. Mullen. Um, and the kids built the checkerboard, the hardwood and, soft, and softwood. Some of us donated. Um, Buckingham's and Bell's been real generous over the years. Uh, they give us some of this plastic. You can see plexiglass. We make some frames for Christmas time. Uh, they pretty Buckingham's has given us all their narrow stuff that they can't use for project, but we can have. So periodically, I stop by and grab some materials from them. Uh, as a vacuum form project, we advanced this besides just vacuum forming over a mold. Now the kids have to also make a frame. It's got to be custom fit to whatever size they make, paint it, stain it, and that's where well, there's an advantage to the picture of one like that. So we advanced a little bit farther. Uh, this is a great project. It's, it's bending the plastic and we talk about thermoplastics and thermosets and, and kids know this. Is the, then all of a sudden we do the project and go, oh this is thermoplastic. You know why? Because it does this or that. So they take what they learn in a lesson and apply it firsthand. These are great little games. Uh, I know Cracker Barrel sells them made out of wood, so we make them out of plastic. Uh, the pegs are pretty cheap, and these also, the tech department for years has donated toys for tops. So all my demos I do for this class, which is one per class, six of them, I just gave them to Jim Rance the other day. Uh, every checkerboard I build as a demo of the kids, we give the toys for tops, so it's, there's no waste. So we even give them away. So the kids bring all this home, and then they're learning a lot more in eighth grade. This is something that's normally taught in the high school. So it's industry related, conservation related, green technology. Kids today are more into green technology than we are. They, they get mad at me if I throw a piece of paper out. Where is your recycling bin, Mr. Hicking? So they're pretty much into that. And we also have a little bit of the metals. We do the CO2 car on this. So next up, Mr. Mosley has got a great new program as well. I got to bring that down too. Not quite as tall as Tom. Um, I would actually like to first start that we, we really are just a great department. We are constantly, hey, do you think this is perfect? Hey, I just got this. How would you put it in? We're sharing worksheets. We share stuff all the time. And it, I think we're really just a really good department. And I think that's what gives us the opportunity to explore these different things. Um, uh, on the computer modeling, this goes back like a year after I started, so almost probably 18, 19 years ago, it was um, the Inventor software. This isn't it, but it was the 3D modeling and looking at, you know, we've been doing the sketching and stuff, and now kids can translate materials in real time and they can look at the image on the screen. And that started, you know, when I first started, we went to training and we started getting the software. And then we've been doing it ever since, and now advance, you know, 18 years. Now we can output that and that got into the computer modeling. Um, what's great about this is it's a passion of mine. I have an art background, and I can bring that passion into the kids. Uh, so what's up here now, these are our CNC machine, which is the 
the carving unit, you put a router in it, and it controls it, and you can do an exact thing. And what's nice about that, so if we look at those, a lot of those are actually sketches that the kids did that were transferred on to, uh, into a Photoshop program that we could save to the JPEG and then turn that on. So we do actually have a few gifts for the board. Start small. All right, so with my art background, I'm constantly running down to Phil Williamson and saying, hey, what's the crop look like this year? Trying to hook up with some kids. So I, I put it on to him and said, hey, we got a board presentation. I'm looking for a picture of a hawk. And you got a couple of, well, more than a couple. You got a lot of talented artists down there in his uh, studio arts program. So I had a young lady uh, step up and say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw you a hawk. So she drew a hawk. Uh, I'll give her some credit. It's Aurora Karuliak. A lot of vowels in that name. But. So she drew that. And then, so we transferred it to into a carving. So this is her actual sketch that was transferred in, and then, so we made you a little sign, you can put it on your table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it really allows kids to pull from their interest uh, to last year. And then we go into the 3D modeling part. So this is uh, a tank model. Uh, this particular kid, would come down every ninth period, and this was uh, last year's group, and he had models of the tank, and he was measuring, and he was looking, and he was researching and finding pictures online of, of what this tank looked like and how to get the exact duplicate of that. So, and then this kid found schematics for Legos, and he sat down, and he actually created them on the street software, and we were able to print them. So we had one uh, printer last year, and it was kind of hard, because some of the prints like just that, that's uh, those hair things, the kanji sticks, I think they're called, for the girl. <laughs> so something like that takes like two or three hours to print. So you can imagine, you know, trying to get a lot of kids through. So actually, with your gracious help, we have four printers now that we can put multiple stuff on. Uh, this is a working lock. We got the kid sat down, he figured out how locks work, and so each of those pins switch to a certain location, and it slides in and out. All right, it's not very secure because they pop out, but it's a start. Um, I can keep going. I'd like that. So this was a votive holder. Uh, I told her no, no flames, but she could use uh, the battery operated ones. Otherwise, it didn't help. <clears throat> but that. So this is. Uh, we start with 3D, trying to get them to 3D. We still do the 3D sketching, but now we're into the 3D modeling, trying to trans translate one to the other. And that brings us to uh, Nina, Nina Stalzenberg is here tonight. Uh, so she also has a gift for you guys. So this was designed by Nina and then printed them on the 3D. We have one for each of the board members and take one. Get a little Christmas tree. Uh, Nina, do you want to talk about it? printer working it's pretty amazing to I mean very soothing to actually sit and watch I have them running and my seventh graders come in the room now and they're sitting there staring uh, with all the printers now we've actually been able to develop um, it's a simple activity they're going to make a little uh, like a key tag or a dog tag but they're going to design it on the software and then print it out and that'll give them the interest in the okay do I want to take this next year so there we go I forgot, we have a gift too from Materials Processing. Every board member gets a screwdriver. With their injection molder. <laughs> Maria's glad I brought my Dallas Cowboys mug to present them, and she said. <laughs> I didn't think anybody would accept it. Um, so one of the things that we'll be doing with the laser printing, because the, the department does talk all the time in the CNC engraving is, so we still build that boring basic toolbox in seventh grade, but there's way more than a toolbox that I'll talk about uh, more in a second. Um, 
but we're going to get some additional CNC uh, printers and engravers so that the kids can all individualize them and put their own designs on the side of them and make it more individualized towards what they are, um, like Mr. Devendorf did with his library pass. Uh, and again, we went from 7th grade to 8th grade to here's all these things and we'll be able to introduce all, we already do introduce all these concepts in 7th grade so kids can start to steer in a direction. Um, the technology department is awesome. They have never been just about technology. They've never been just about this toolbox. Uh, they started way back when with, uh, I don't believe Moscow, Moscow Moolah is a real thing. I am pretty sure that two Greco frog skins was just an opportunity for them to put Mrs. Greco in a witch's hat, um, which they all look forward to. But they took things and they, they addressed real life skills with kids and they always have. Hey, you need to work. And if you work around the lab, then you get money. And if you get money around the lab, then you can buy stuff and you can keep your checkbook as they're teaching real world skills. You can keep your checkbook. You can figure out what materials you need to buy to build your next project with. It's always been more than just, we're building a toolbox, for sure. Um, they really incorporate kids' interests and their own interests. We talk about the attributes of the Central Square Learner. Um, you need self-management if you're going to operate power tools in a responsible way. You need to be inquisitive, which these three gentlemen are definitely inquisitive. Um, this is not the finest example of a checkerboard I've ever seen, but um, you have a student who persevered, for sure, to get that done and to learn what they were not good at and to get better at it. Inquisitiveness on the part of the teachers and the students. Uh, Mr. Moskal was happy to talk about what a great department they are, and I sometimes wonder about that. But in reality, um, this has all come about because of what they wanted to do. So it's been fan It's always fantastic to work with them. I think I have one more slide. Well, two more slides. Hopefully I can get her to talk. No, she won't talk. And you can see how engaged students are in class, way beyond just we're going to build a Lego model following the Lego directions. Um, way further than that, for sure. Uh, we have um, all kinds of students putting in extra time, coming down during lunch times, building uh, cars that have gears and forward and reverse plus multiple forward gears, and that's not part of a project, that's part of an interest and a love that they have that these folks have started to uh, really, really build into it. Uh, the board last board meeting approved some uh, money for after school supervision of students. I've got teachers who are talking about starting math league. Uh, go, sorry, continuing our coding club with code.org. The librarian is running a Raspberry Pi club, which has nothing to do with Raspberry Pis, but has to do with little uh, computers that they can program that are more powerful than the computer that any of us really knew about growing up. They've been doing it right along. They're excited to continue. Uh, anime club, Dungeons and Dragons club, which, well, what does that have to do with technology? It doesn't have much to do with technology, but it does have to do with problem solving and teamwork and leadership and a little bit of math while you're having fun with your friends. Yeah, that's all in there. Um, Spiro Balls, Makerspace, Mrs. Vant will tell you about the 10 students uh, from the middle school who come up to the high school to work on the robotics club up there and how successful they are. And so we just want to say thank you to all of you for your time uh, and your support of this program and uh, for all the efforts that you put in on behalf of our kids. Thank you very much. Great. Great presentation. Uh, I'll, I'll start the question and answer, or question if you don't mind. Um, so for anyone, anytime someone presents, I, I look at it in kind of four buckets. So Mr. Colbufo, this is generally where he cringes, uh, because, no, we really need to know the board. So we're we definitely are moving more toward the bottom up build of our budget. Um, so when you think about it, there's space, resources, time, and training are four big buckets. And it doesn't have to be tonight, but it's great stuff that you're doing, but what don't you have that you need? What aren't we doing that we could be doing? Uh, that, that's info that, as a board, if it's not asked for, we'll never know. And I'm not saying that you don't do that through administration now or whatever, but I just want to make sure we point out we're, we're looking to know what the next step is. This is awesome. 
but make sure we know what you need. So, but this is exciting, and I have to say, yeah. <laughs> I thought, Greg, you might be willing to say something. Well, just from the 3D, the hardest part with like the 3D printing is, it takes a long time. Like I said, uh, we would put six trees on one printer and it would take four to five hours to print. One of them was eight hours. So you gotta get in the morning early, but get in early, you gotta start it. So trying to get, so get to a level where we gotta be able to print for the whole class. So I know there's obviously a large scale, but the printers you guys have, roughly, you know what one goes for? Uh, that, uh, they were just on sale for Cyber Monday for about a thousand bucks. Yeah. Let's get ten more. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes, I saw it. It's the same with the carving. The carving takes time. So that's, I mean, so that's the hard part. I mean, the technology is great, but it's sometimes time-consuming. And what can you, what can you have done in, in, in a 40-minute time? So a lot of it is kind of on us to say, okay, now, come on in during your lunch so we can start a print. And, you know, kids are eager to do that. But we have a few more units, especially the carver. And Tony's been really good about finding money to have to have that happen, and we talked well before the presentation, and they, at least two of the three of them already had a wish list put together for because there is there is money available for different avenues, uh, but we definitely would like to, I think in some cases, go a little bit more advanced with some of the technology. So we have a range of, here's basically a printer, or a basic uh, 3D printer, and here's, we have four or five of those, but oh, we have some more that could do a little bit more, a little bit bigger, a little bit better, too. Well, and I love the fact that, that, that after school activities and that we're going to be paying you guys now to do this because you had a lot of great ideas like robotics, coding, things like that that you wanted to be able to provide for students that they didn't have those opportunities in the past. If they did, it was strictly voluntary, volunteering your time. But now the numbers are showing that we have enough kids that really want to, you know, build these uh, these areas of strength. So I thank you guys for uh, for doing it. And they can use it for toys or not. Any kid just wants to build it for fun. We Get it to also. The other thing is, uh, on the flip side, the district was very good to us that years to help these programs develop. So it's nice to ask a question. So, you know, we wouldn't be here if we didn't get some help. So, the laser printers, uh, I got two injection molds this year, we definitely need them. Uh, so, that's helped us out a lot too. Yeah. Summary, no one told us no yet, but we'll keep asking. Oh. <laughs> well, well, I have two things. One, let us know if you, they do say no. And two, I couldn't support what you guys are doing enough. I mean, it's, it's just fantastic. And I think that the, 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 the more that you can broaden out as far as what interest the kids have and how it relates back, because it might be a little easier to teach them math. It might be a little bit, bit easier to understand why, you know, the chemistry that goes into this. So there's you got that connection as far as how it all comes together is what you're trying to do as, you know, as a school district. So um, I, I couldn't support it. This is fantastic, I think. And I don't have a question. I would just like to say um, I'm most impressed, and I know all of you pretty well, your passion for what you do. Um, and I know the passion isn't just tonight in front of the board. Um, I know it's every day um, with every child, every student. So that goes a long way, and it really comes through, and you're making an impact. So thank you. Yeah. I have to say, if you're a parent here tonight, I think my kids are decent kids, and I always ask them, you know, how is school, what you do, and it's all like, eh, you know, same old thing. Thank you for telling us this is what they're doing, because I absolutely don't get this from them. So, great job. Thank you. Any other questions? No, and I just want to thank Nina. Thank you for coming, and this is awesome. Run around the applause for you. I will say Nina, could you make me a real tree? Because I don't have one at home. You <laughs> <laughs> need a bigger printer. <laughs> Print sections. I was going to say, I, I know you need time on the prayer, but I think this could be a great fundraiser. Red Hawk tournament as a fundraiser. Just a good, good idea for your class. but. Awesome job. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Lord. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that was fantastic. Thank you very much. All right. On to item E, reports uh, to the board. We'll start with unfinished business. And Mr. Kozufo has a brief update on the real, real data quick. discussion. Real, real quick, because I know for uh, executive session we are real over here. So I just want to say, 
Um, regarding our discussion with data, we um, had sent out to the board uh, well over a month ago the data points that we had come up with. We put it out. Some of you guys have added some things. Then we sent it out to our asset cabinet. We got some more data points. And then what we did was we had um, Mike Vespi from Forecast 5 came in and met with our cabinet. And um, he told us about something that Forecast 5 offers called uh, Five Lab, but he also we also talked about some of the things that we already currently own, like School Tool, to really be able to figure out what are we really maximizing the resources that we already have. Um, but what we did was we sent him. It's not going to cost anything because we already have a part of the uh, Forecast Five product. That he's going to be able to give us a visual description of all of the data points that we sent. So. It won't take long. He'll get that information, get it backed up in nice tables, charts, and graphs. So then it won't just be those. It'll actually start to have the data filled in and what we already sent you guys give you a better better look at that. So we're excited. More to come. Um, not looking to put the pressure on you, but is there any time frame on that? Like just so we know when to look for it? I can check with him. His first thing was just get me that and I'll get it back to you. I don't know exactly um, what that's going to be. I, I would say probably within a month we should be able to get that back to him. But I'll, I'll find out and I'll send an email to the board. That's perfect. All right. Wood, anything for you? Nothing there. Uh, I do not have anything for uh, the board, so I'll open up to the entire board. Any topics or yeah, questions? Something real quick. Something that came up today was um, the loss of telephones, right? And there really isn't anything on the website to contact like transportation, like through like an email address um, or some other means, right? So I guess what I'm asking is, is there other methods for contacting like schools and transportation? And if there is, can we make that available on the website? Yeah, so I thought the, all the emails were on the website, so I would say John Pierce and, it, and his emails right there as well. And the staff director. Yeah, so you'd, you'd have to contact one person, right? There's no, like, group distribution, like, if he was out. Right, so for instance, you go to transportation on the website, click here to email transportation. Yeah, like that. Sure, I think it's then there's Yolanda right under it and hers, but... Is that the only two that we would email? Those two people and that's it? For transportation, if yes. there was a transportation issue. And then, and then it would be, if you look at the org chart, then it would be Maureen that oversees transportation, then it would be me if they contacted, but you want to jump Well, in? just each department has been allowed to set up their pages as they wished. And with the new uh, phone system, what we've been, where's Heather? Heather's helping me do this, Heather shows, really eliminating most of the phone numbers because they're all being disconnected as we transition to the VoIP system. So there's really one main district number with an auto attendant, and that's how you get people. So we did take people's phone numbers off of staff directory, but all the emails remain. And as we design the new website, it'll be much cleaner and, and easier to navigate and find people. But we're kind of in this transition period with that right now. But like I said, each department has done their own thing, and we can talk about yeah, be sure it's on there. To Phil's point, even though it's intermittent, it could work or not work, and then you try it two minutes later, and then the phone does work. He's talking about windstream. Oh, windstream's problem, problem. Is what yes. he's talking about. Yeah. So in the meantime, Sorry. And, and we put that on the website, but to his point, yeah. we said we're recognizing that windstream's having a problem, but we didn't actually say if you're you know struggling with transportation, yeah, email us. here are three emails that you contact when, but that's something easy. Right, yeah, we can put something out on that. Yeah. We can do that tomorrow. And uh, what is the the issue with Windstream? Is that something that happens often? Because It has never happened with us with Windstream yet, but it's happened nationally with them. Nationally? Yeah. Okay. So. It's Windstream yeah. inside their network. Yeah. I don't know what Windstream is. Any other questions or topics? All right, with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Kogel for the superintendent's report. Okay, real quick, uh, I know the board you're aware, but if you had people ask, uh, this Friday, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock, Mr. Daniel Baldwin will be speaking about uh, sharing his experience, strength, and hope, as that's how it's referred to in uh, AA. Mr. Baldwin overcame an addiction um, and how he was able to do that. So he basically shares his experiences. He's very open. The fact that he went through uh, rehab ten times until he really bought into it, and uh, he 
you can teach us to save, to save his life. Um, there are a lot of people, from what I'm hearing, that have contacted me saying that they are going to come to this. Um, there are people outside of the district that are very interested. We pretty much put it uh, open to anybody. Because what we have at Central Square and any other school in Oswego County, we have students right now that are in Phoenix, in Mexico. By the end of the year, they will be Central Square students. We share students. Uh, it's very transient. We have, a, we have a population that moves around. So by offering this uh, resource to families all around the county and outside the county, we just felt it was the right thing to do. Um, so we're really excited about that. Again, that's this Friday in the, um, the auditorium as part of the Red Hawk University program that Damon Villeneuve and Jennifer DiBianco have uh, really done some wonderful things with that. So that is, that is this Friday. Yep. Tom, am I correct also, City's going to live stream it, so if anyone can't make it, um, I, I don't know, I know City put it out, but if we could cross post that so people know they could you know, watch it. From Absolutely, the it's, and it's not going to be recorded because we will for like copyright purposes and whatnot, but, but it will be put out there. On that note, there, we've been um, talking with people from um, distance learning, so it is possible that this could also become a way that we can ge generate revenue that districts can tap into the many great topics that we have uh, at Red Hook University when, it, when it's appropriate and applies. So it's streamed but not recorded. Correct. 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 And we can record it? Is that what you said? <laughs> legal, the legal? Well, uh, we, we couldn't record it and put it on the web or something? Well, we can, we can ask uh, Daniel Baldwin if we can record it. Um, what we are going to do is start with just, we can't record the streaming, correct? Correct. Right. And there's probably some legal issues to it. Right, there's people in the audience that are on it, and you got to be able to sign off, and it can be very crowded based on what I'm getting. So, to... yeah, Daniel's our first experiment with this. Um, so we wanted to take it very low-key, just stream it out, see what kind. It went to all of New York State, the whole distance learning consortium in New York State. So we want to see what kind of response we get. If we get a good response, then we can work ahead of time and be proactive as we book these things so that we're asking the right questions ahead of time. Can we tape it? Would you like a live uh, presentation where people from all over the state can be asking you questions? So there's many ways it can happen. We just want to start small and go from there. Yeah, this I got be a real, calls. Go ahead. This may be a really stupid question. Is there a way to tell how many people stream something? And if yep. that's not, yes. there is? Yep. Yes. City will be able to tell you us. You know, 4,800 people? Stream. Well, she called today and she goes, how many people do you think? And I said, oh, I don't know. I said, this is our first time. We don't know. She goes, well, I've got 200 slots. She goes, do you think I need to raise it to 500? I'm like, if we get 500 people, I'm going to be shocked. But here's, you know, we have our fingers crossed. I hope we get a good turnout. But yes, it, it'll track. Just like it did when we did that with our board meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The Brewers have... The Brewerton Elementary received $500 from the American Library Association to help plan and implement coding activities during the Computer Science Education Week 2018, which is December 3 through 9. Brewerton Elementary already offered a coding and robotics club for fifth graders, and this grant will allow Mrs. Dershang to purchase more materials for the club and begin to expand more hands-on coding lessons with um, other grade levels. Slade Springer was selected to the first team on the Syracuse.com Post Standards All Central New York's um, large football team for the 2018 season. Congratulations, Slade. Big congratulations goes out to Emma Savides, Savides. Yeah. Uh, who, um, as a first year freshman, placed second among all the other teams in the All Central New York. Bridge Build 'em and Boston Science Competition sponsored by SRC and SU School of Engineering. Based on their auditions um, on November 17, the following cent uh, Central Square Middle School students earned a performance seat in the Oswego County Junior uh, All County Honors Band. We have Elena Kernan, Grace Roberts, Kyler Mc uh, McAllister, Chris Sanford, Serena Hersam. Dominic Tutello, Truman Raminsky, Jacob Lambridge, Sean Saunders, or Saunders, Thomas Hogboom, Sophie Arcuri, Abigail Newton, Ethan Moody, Raina Fenton, Nicholas Lennox, Nina Stalsenberg, Olivia Cornell, Madison Giesman, and Joshua Sunday. 
An interesting statistic is that Central Square has the highest percentage of students uh, pre presentation of all schools in Oswego County and will make up 25% of all county junior high school honors band. And my last um, superintendent point here was I want to give a huge shout out to the roughly 22 students that uh, convinced me to do the polar plunge yesterday in Oneida Lake. And even though Mr. McCarthy promised me that the water would be the same temperature as it is in the Adirondacks in July, I definitely was not. It was freezing cold, but the students did that. It was for a great cause, Special Olympics. I've shared before, my youngest has special needs. I feel near and dear to uh, Special Olympics, and it was just awesome to see so many students come out to do that. I want to thank um, Mr. Martin. I want to thank Mr. Sundit for their very generous uh, donations, and the team raised uh, $400 to do that. three more points, so I'll be quick. Based on their NISMA solo auditions, the following high school students earn a performance seat. Kira Brill, Hannah Sw Sywalski. Yeah, he will tell me anyway. So, Sywalski, yeah. Um, Lily Fitzgerald, Michelle Bedworth, Cole Wilson, Kylie Galerno, Jillian Julian, Jillian Howe, um, Claire Ames, Rachel Stringer, Jared King, Indiana Fusco. We congratulate the following students who have earned performance seats in 2019 NYSBDA Honors Band, Cole Wilson and Claire Ames. The Central Square Music Department is proud to announce and, and congratulate Jared King, who based on his NISMA audition participated in the NISMA Conference All-State Symphonic Band that is the top honors band in the state of New York. Congratulations and thank you. Session, so I'll make a motion that the Central Square School District Board of Education hereby moves into executive session to discuss the potential sale of property because public discussion would substantially affect the value of the property at issue with possible action to follow. Can I get a second? Second. Mr. Roy with a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. We will return.